ladies and gentlemen, here we are at Galleria Agnella, part of the wonderful Southern Highlands Arts Trail, and I'm very honoured to be here with Mr Jamie Boyd. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, well, here we are. This is uh, and Galleria Agnella's first uh, time participating, I think, in the Arts Trail. Yes, so. very lucky to have her part yeah. of the trail. Yes, she's uh, done a very good job with the the exhibition. Absolutely. Mm. Now what do we have here behind us? Uh, the white horse, mm -hmm. which I did from a sketch. This was a horse standing in the middle of a pond. I think it was partly flooded mm -hmm. land. But, and a wonderful reflection. I know I've done my best to depict the scene. Absolutely. Um, and it actually moved around a lot, but I, I did take a few photos. So. Oh. So I got that. From the photograph. Yeah, well, uh, and pencil sketches. Right. Yeah. How wonderful. Now, Jamie, what is your process with creating an artwork? Ah, that's a very good question. It works on a lot of different levels. I mean, you start off uh, just having a, a, not even a thought, but a, an impulse, some kind of intuition. And then uh, I think um, actually the medium that you're going to use comes into play. That's very important because uh, whether it's pastel or oil paint like this, and also whether it's on a board or canvas, they tend to direct you those very sort of material things like that. And then sometimes I start very spontaneously uh, just making a mark without thinking too much about it. And other times it's a charcoal sketch. And sometimes you continue along the same path that you started on. But other times it's you scrape it off and start again. Start again. Yeah. Do you have any inspirations or listen to any music while you paint? Yeah, a lot of music, a lot, and uh, uh, I usually have a sketch, if I'm, especially if it's a landscape in the studio. A lot of landscapes done on plein air outside, and, but um, in the studio I have sketches and music's wonderful. But the trouble is if you're, if the CD or the record or, or the radio stops playing while you're in the middle of it, you have to decide whether to go back and t t uh, turn over the record. Yes. I'm talking about the old days, I mean, the LP. <laughs> <laughs> turn, uh, you know, it over turn it over a Yeah. It's, uh, but, and even CDs are a bit out of date now. Yes. But uh, the radio is, you know, like classic FM or something. But then when the music stops and they talk, then you think, oh, oh it's shall I, interrupting shall I turn it down? Yeah, interrupt. Or we'll just keep, if, you're in the, if you've got a, you know, in, in, in the um, zone or Yes, if you're say. in that you don't want to, you don't want to, you can, you can almost block out any disturbing sounds. Yes. But uh, yeah, music's, uh, and sometimes just going for a walk before you go into the studio, you brisk walk around the little park. Yes. And that gets your mind going. Right, thank you. Yeah. Fresh air and. Yeah. Yeah. And also uh, activities going on around you. So how much of your work is done within a confined studio or uh, when do you take it outdoors, yeah. for example? Well, um, I suppose it's about 50-50, but as I've got older, it's more in, in the studio, mm -hmm. uh, partly because it's, it's a lot of effort <laughs> to go out. You've got to have your, all, those... all the paints and you've got to uh, you know, carry it if you're going down to the river or wherever it might be. Yes. And uh, But it's, I love doing that because you it's a totally different process. You're, yes. you're so intent on capturing the moment uh, when you're outside because it doesn't stay, uh, you know, the light changes within minutes. So yes. you've got to work relatively fast. And also you, your thought process is different because you're not, um, you're responding to what's in front of you. Whereas in the studio, you're kind of inventing things. Uh, even if you've got a, a sketch as a reference, you, you're still not, it's not the real thing. Yes. So, so you're producing a different kind of work. I mean, they're equally valid, but they're very different, in my experience, they're very different processes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like sitting there within some sort of landscape, it would, embody, yeah, you be, would embody that. That's right, and you become part that. of it, yeah, almost. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Now, Jamie, it's obviously a lifetime of work. At what age did you start painting yourself? Ah, I think I was probably about 14 when I thought of my painting as being... I actually sold little oil sketches as Christmas presents and things. Around, I used to go around to the local shops. Uh, that was in London and 
13 and 14. And then uh, I had my first exhibition was, was about 16 or 17 in Adelaide. Um, uh, it's a long way back. But uh, I, I sometimes try and work out what, what it would uh, average out at each year, but it would be in the hundreds anyway, maybe getting towards a thousand. And there's also graphic works, you know, lithographs and etchings, right. graphics. So many different forms. Yeah, a lot of, uh, I've still got a lot of early things I've kept. But, you know, in exhibitions, you, I've had exhibitions in quite a few countries in Europe and in America, not very much, but so they're dispersed, or well, Australia, of course, and, and England, and so they're pretty much dispersed in, across the world, but... Have you ever done a full count Well, of how many uh, uh, wonderful I, artworks you've produced? Well, I think it would, if, the, if I, let me think, because um, you don't paint one every day, but <laughs> if you said in, in a year you might do, um, say, 30, Generally around 30. Yeah, I mean, that, that's terribly, because one year you might do more and one year you do less, but... On an average. And if you can't finish oil paintings like that, I'd say about that. But if you included little pastel sketches and watercolours and so on, and drawings, there were hundreds and probably thousands of drawings. So it's a big number. Uh, Goodness me. But um, I don't have... Some of the best ones I don't have, which uh, I was feel a bit sorry about. But you have to keep the wheels of commerce turning. Of course, you've sold them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And where can we see your paintings all over the world? Well, there's um, some public collections, but they mostly would be in private houses. Yeah, just as is. Yeah, yeah. like this. Yeah. Lovely. You love going mm. sort of a little bit more boutique and. Yeah, not. I don't really have a preference, but um, in anywhere and everywhere is. Uh, I mean, one likes to have a big light, light space with. Yes. But it, usually it's not natural light, you usually get artificial light, but it's, uh, and some venues, of course, set the paintings off better than others. So, yes, of course. But, you know, if people focus on the, the artwork, then it doesn't matter too much. Not really. No. Yeah. So your, your wonderful <coughs> father, Arthur Boyd. Yes. What was it like growing up with a, a full-time artist in the family as your father? The, yes, well, he also did that. He grew up, but his father was a... Uh, an artist and a potter, uh, it goes back a few generations. Does it really? So uh, it was, I don't know, there were lots of different aspects because he was at home, he worked in a studio in the house, so, and that seemed normal that, that your father would be in the house all day because I, I had no other experience. Yes. But it, that was good because I learnt a lot from just standing in the studio watching him work. Yeah, and he was there and uh, present yeah, in, yeah. in your childhood. Yes, he was there most of the time. I think in the very early days he did painting trips out to, uh, you know, out of Victoria and Wimmera, so on. So he'd be away for it. But I was probably in you know, seven or eight or something. And did so he did. teach you a lot? Your he did, of course, course, yeah. It was, but it was all absorbed unconsciously in a way. I mean, he, he'd give direct instructions about technical things, mm -hmm. but not a lot. Not you a, mostly just watch. It's mainly doing, learned. yeah, watching the process, and that's mm -hmm. the best way, I think. If someone tells you something, you usually either instinctively you want to reject it or you forget it. Or you, or you make your own take on it. And yeah, you can take make what it. you can yeah. and then produce something but different. That's right. You, you, you experiment too with the, what you've been told. But also the materials, he had a, you know, an abundance of paint and canvas around. So I never felt constrained by not having enough because it's all expensive stuff, you know. Of course. So. Yes. Now yeah. everyone always asks you about your, your wonderful, famous artist father. Mm. But what about your mother? Tell us about her. Yes, well, uh, she's, she was an artist. I mean, she was painting at the same... They met, I think, my parents met at art school. So, and she was a very good painter. And, uh, but as is the way, she gave it up in order to perform other duties. Yes, have a family. Uh, have a family, <laughs> which might not be the same nowadays. Um, hopefully, that I think it's slightly more equal in the, yes. the distribution of... Responsibilities she, and so on. Did she ever yeah. take it back up later in? Not really. She did. Uh, no, no, not that I noticed. Uh, <laughs> but she did a bit of writing, and but I think she was fairly, you know, occupied supporting my my dad a lot, you know, with just general office administrative stuff. And, yeah. and did she always travel with him? Yes, they always went together. Every yeah. exhibition. 
Yeah, I mean, they travel back and forth from Europe to Australia yes. all the time. And uh, by ship, which is... Uh, ship in those They days. never flew, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even into the 20th century, 21st century, sorry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they um, rose together. And I think she was a little bit regretful in a way that she hadn't made her own mark. Yes. But there are a few really good paintings, one at Bandanon, actually. Uh, you know the Bandanon Trust? And I have heard of this There's a, a couple of her early paintings, which are very, very good. And um, that's actually being renovated at the moment, the, the Bandanon House, the homestead. Right. And tell us uh, um, this Bandanon, Bandanon homestead. Oh, well, the homestead. You might be thinking of the, the new art gallery yes. at Bandanon, which is actually at Riversdale in right. the adjoining property, which is just around the corner on the okay. river. And is that yeah. like a sort of like a museum? Yeah, it's a big art museum, art gallery, state of the art, unbelievable. It's right out in the middle of the bush there, you come across this huge edifice. Well, actually, it's half of it's hidden in the, in the, mount, in the hillside, oh, it was dug into the hillside. Was uh, it architecturally designed and built? Yes, uh, um, uh, Kirsten Thompson, uh, uh, architects in Melbourne, uh, done it. And they just won uh, the um, Sir Zelman Cohen Award for Public Architecture. I'm oh, sorry, I couldn't remember all yes. that. And uh, which is a very prestigious Absolutely. award. So that's Absolutely. worth going to see. It's um, with the Glen Merkett, there's a, the Education Centre, which was made more 20 years, odd years ago. And so this is sort of complements it. It's an education centre. There are lots of school children go there. It's, it's always busy. Dance groups, theatre groups, mm -hmm. musicians, studios for students and on the bridge, this building uh, sort of spans across two hills, like a railway bridge, oh. uh, very, very striking. Yes. And that's full of little studios and, and sleeping can, quarters and so on. Oh, okay, so they can stay on the property? Oh, yes, they, people stay and uh, artists Short and residents. Short stays or long stays? I think they vary. I think uh, with the Bundadon property, they're usually longer stays, the artists and residents. But they're Riversdale, they're, um, I'm not sure about that, but I think they're probably shorter. And they're, they're inset right in, in the wonderful landscape? Well, I mean, it does dominate the, the landscape, but not in a bad way. And it's got a lovely cafe, Ramuck's Cafe. Oh, beautiful. Great food. Yeah. <laughs> so open to the public, but as oh, well yes. as school groups. Yeah. So. It's most, uh, the, the new gallery and the, um, the bridge are, are open, I think, five days a week. Mm -hmm. I think, and, um, and quite a lot of your family paintings there. Yeah, I think most of me, my father's, but there's other paintings, Sidney Nolan and Brett Whiteley's, Charlie Blackman's. Yes. And they're in the wonderful storage. Uh, this is sort of climate controlled storage place in, of the, in the gallery. And, and it's very diverse in its activities there, I think. Mm -hmm. there. Now, Jamie, tell us about your wonderful friendship with Aniela here from oh, yes. Aniela Galleria. Yeah. Um, she oh, that, started off in Kangaroo that's Valley right, yeah. and now she's here yes. in, in beautiful Barrow, yeah. Southern Highlands. Well, I, we met um, actually through Bundanon uh, because my father uh, gave her a painting for a new gallery which she just opened. And I think actually the gallery, there's some link, uh, was either opened on my birthday or there's some anniversary on my oh. birthday, so we had a connection straight away. Yes. And going back to the 90s, I'm not sure the exact year. So. I've had an exhibition with her more or less every 18 months, two years okay. since then. And she still and deals in your Still deals in this new venue. And you're very good friends. We're still good friends. You friend. and your beautiful yeah. wife. Which is... When uh, you travel to Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the gallery, of course, in Kangaroo Valley was uh, uh, very different from this, this venue. This this ha the house. Which, yes. But this is interesting because it's you're seeing paintings in in the context that they probably end up in if, if people buy one. And that's right, you know, So a it's a, a good way of judging. Yes. But uh, Aniela, she's stayed with us in London and Italy and so on. We have regular meetings. and yes. so. lots of That's fond good. memories. Fond memories. It's good. It'll continue, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> any but. large plans for the next sort of uh, years or any big projects? I mean, working, painting. Uh, yes. Uh, not... Um, I actually was got to a stage where I, th I was thinking I could just do anything uh, on a whim, so to speak, <laughs> in, in, within the you know, painting, uh, rather than, I think when one's younger, you think in terms of producing a body of work for an exhibition and you want it to have a, a theme or a, right. uh, have an impact in, in some sense, you know, might be, not in my case, but you know, a political statement or a, just 
a theme which explores uh, certain colours or a particular subject matter. But I was thinking, as you get a bit older, you imagine you're going to have more freedom to not be conscious of what the public might think when you yeah. show your work. You want to just do uh, whatever comes to mind. And, uh, but with the same discipline uh, that you might apply to painting for a, a commission or yes. uh, an exhibition. But uh, anyway, uh, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Uh, so, so are you finding yourself yeah. being a little bit more spontaneous? Yeah, yeah. well, I'm, I'm practising still. I mean, <laughs> still practising? Still, yeah. yeah you, I mean, it's a lifelong, you never win, you never get to the end of the, you never achieve, you know, perfection and never even master the craft. It's, so it's, it's a, it's a, a very evolving. elusive thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably right, because I think once you think you've mastered it, then you could either stop and, and not do anything else, uh, or it'll become you know, soulless. So, yeah. so that's not. A, it's a dangerous thing to yes. feel that you that you're so uh, you've got such a skill or such a um, a whole a master. A master. Do you have to keep going with it? And yeah, yeah, and, and that's why it's it's actually quite torturous in a way <laughs> because you avoid getting too well, formulaic in, in, a, in a short. And when word. you're in the public eye and they they expect a certain thing. Well, yeah, I think that it used to be more the case that. The, um, the public would be interested in uh, seeing some new aspect of the painter and they'd be, uh, there was a romantic element I think which is not so much nowadays but, but there, there is an expectation of very high uh, skill, precision and perfection and yes. pristine and so presentation and so on which they're worth aspiring to mm -hmm. but not at the expense of getting the spontaneous essence of the subject matter. Yes. I guess they're just sort of always waiting for the next thing from the boys. Yeah, I, I'm not sure who's waiting, but it's, <laughs> I, I know they do, you know, with films, uh, ones, I'm always intrigued by what the actors, famous actors, what they're going to do in the next film, and, or the director. That's fascinating to, yeah, to see. The next role, the next Yeah, the next challenge. role, and how, they, yeah, and how they adapt to it. A bit different from painting. Yes. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Boyd exhibition here at Galleria Emiela is still continuing, so please come on down and see these wonderful works. Mm -hmm.